Hi guys, it's Markeisha, and I'm going to check in and do one more video blog for the week. Yesterday we did a video blog kind of on the girly side about love and searching for love. It's kind of more of a girl topic, even though boys, they go through it. But when we talk about love, it hits a girl straight in the heart. So today we're going to turn it up. We're going to talk about all things NBA, from the playoffs to injuries. And so first we're going to get started in the Eastern Conference. We're going to talk about Miami and Chicago. Chicago went in game one. They were coming off a high from game seven from taking down Brooklyn. Probably the best se or the best matchup that Chicago could have gotten in the first round. And then built up momentum. They went into Miami and they, they just won that. Like Miami was a little rusty, sat out those eight days and didn't really come in and be ready to play. So then in game two, Chicago took the beatdown of the playoffs. And... It was expected. Miami didn't perform like they should have in game one and came out and dominated in game two. So the series starts tonight in Chicago. What's going to happen? I'm not sure. Like, I hope that Chicago comes out and plays well and keeps it a series, of course. But I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen with Lou Dang still out and Derrick Rose still not playing. And that's a whole nother issue, but... If he's not ready to play, if he's not mentally prepared to play, then he's not physically prepared either. He's just not ready. You have to be men mentally prepared, and certainly with the things that he does on the court, he uses speed, his quickness, agility, all of those things to make cuts and to be explosive on the basketball court. And so if he's not trusting in that rehab that he went through for the last year, then he's just not ready to touch the court again, and that is understandable. We have to get off the man's back and let the man do what he got to do. He is the franchise player for the Chicago Bulls, and so they're going to be on the cautious side. He's everything to the organization. They went from Michael Jordan to nothing, back to Michael Jordan to nothing again. Finally got Derrick Rose as the first round, as the lottery pick, and they're back on top right now. So they're going to be on his side. They're going to be his best cheerleader. And just like Joe Kim Noah the other night, he was on his side. And I think that one thing that would help all of that is he was just like, I'm not going to play this season. I'll be ready for training camp next year. And I know he doesn't want to say that to the fans, but at this point, it would help his teammates and his organization. And so I'm excited to see what happens um, after tonight to see where this series stands. And the other series in the Eastern Conference would be the Indiana Pacers and the New York Knicks, which is a strange series. The Pacers surprised the world by winning game one. But if you have been paying attention to the Pacers all season, you'd see that Paul George is playing amazing, and not even offensively. Um, not only offensively, but also defensively. In game one, he held JR and Carmelo to, what, 5 for 24 from the field when he was guarding one of them. And so, amazing, amazing defense. And that is how you start to make your name in this league. If you can guard people defensively and be able to be a superstar offensively and then also play defensively, there's not a lot of dudes in the league that can do that. And, and if you think back to even like Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell, they dominated on both ends of the floor, and we haven't had a lot of that in the last few years. And then we're going to swap over to the Western Conference and start out with probably the most exciting series, like a youth and kind of like Father Time. That's just what they're doing against each other right now. The Spurs were building a dynasty in the late 90s, early 2000s. And I'm not sure if, if if it doesn't work again this season, if it's time to blow up the team. Personally, I would say they're gonna they should probably blow up the team because, you know, what they have as the big three just hasn't been effective with injuries and finding pieces to fit around them as of the last few years. And then also Tim Duncan. Man, it's hard to see Timmy not be Tim Duncan of the early two thousands, but I guess everyone's time runs out in the NBA. And so it's winding down for Tim. But it's exciting to watch Stephen Curry do what he does night in and night out, having 40 points and 10 assists in that first game and them losing the lead of 16 with four minutes left. But you never saw them lose fight. Even though they lost the lead and first overtime, second overtime, they were still battling. And they, they, were, they gave it their best shot, and certainly for a young club. They bounced back in game two and came out with a win. That shows a lot. That shows a lot about their coach and Mark Jackson and then the players and as a unit. And so I'm excited to see most definitely how that how that matchup also plays out. I think that was the most interesting series that I thought 
just to see the young guns versus the old ones. And then going into the final series, um, where I'm from, Oklahoma City, and against the Grizzlies, man, I, they're killing Oklahoma City in the paint. It's 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 horrible to watch. Um, Kendrick Perkins and Serge Ibaka just have not showed up, and Nick Collison hasn't played particularly well either. And all of our big men are struggling. I mean, granted, Zach Randolph and Marcus Gasol are as good as they come in the paint these days. There's not a lot of big men in the league. But and so when you certainly when you you're playing with two of them on the court, that's a hard adjustment for anyone because a lot of the times in the NBA we play with a small four and even a small center when we have a small four in the in the game. Um, Oklahoma City's getting out rebounded and it's hard to see not see Russell Westbrook not on the court. And as Oklahoma City fans, a lot of people are like, when he was on the court, oh we don't need him, bench him. Yeah, there was some, some this, some, some that about Russ. There was always something to say about Russell. But I think more than anything, what we should take in Oklahoma City from him being injured is how we do need him. You can see it. Like, the crunch time is just Kevin. It's one on five. Nobody else has even been guarded. And so he has to get the ball out quick in transition, shoot the ball off the dribble before the defense can get set. And that's how he hit the game-winning bucket and why he took it so aggressively. And then they just had to rely on the defense for the last 11 seconds. And I think that's what they have to do is just they have to rebound. They have got to figure that out. That was our issue the first year that we made it to the playoffs. Um, we lost on a tip-in to Pau Gasol for the Lakers. And so we're, we're still struggling with the things that, are beating, that were beating us five years ago. And so we have to figure that out, like I said. And then from that point, I think um, – Kevin Durant is, he's Kevin Durant. He had that magazine issue for Sports Illustrated about tired of finishing second. I think that's another thing that we're going to take from Russell's injury is he's going to gain so much from watching from the sideline or from the press box. But Kevin's going to grow too because he hasn't had to be that guy in so long, just like be that guy on the court alone. Kind of takes him back to his Texas days. When he was playing a lot, he would bring the ball up and create for himself, or he would play inside out, and not so much of standing around waiting on the ball to come back to him. He controlled the game, and I think this is going to help him as a leader, and then on and off the court, and just help him grow about seeing different things and when he should go in attack mode and not so much defer to Russ, and and then Russ is going to see where Kevin can do some things also just by watching and seeing Kevin with the ball in his hands. So they're going to have a lot of growth. And so when he said he was tired of finishing second, I think that at some point this moment, Russ's injury is going to help him from doing that or keep him from doing that, I should say. But, guys, we talked all things NBA. So I will talk to you guys again soon. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend and a happy Mother's Day. Do everything for your mom this weekend. Just let her know that you love her. We should do that every day. But most importantly, this weekend, just make her feel a little extra special than you normally would. And if your mom is no longer with us, you know, visit your mom at the cemetery. And not only do that, but make sure that you just say your prayers to God and just be grateful for all the amazing women and extra men that he's put in your life to love you a little more. You know, and just just help buffer for the missing things that you have with your mom. So I hope that you guys do have an amazing weekend. I love you guys. And leave me some comments, and we will talk all things NBA next week and get caught up on the series. And hopefully some crazy things happen in the NBA, and we'll have lots and lots to talk about. I'll talk to you guys soon.